commanded by Lieutenant Jose Arciaga. This platoon refused to yield and held their ground. All right, y'all, welcome back to Coming Arms Channel. Okay, so today we're checking out a recommendation that I got from one of y'all over in the Philippines. Now, we haven't checked out a video about the Philippines or a recommendation from the Philippines in a while, so I figured we're pretty much overdue. Now, I've also been trying to do more of the historical stuff, especially stuff related to the Korean War, and I got a very cool recommendation today that I wanted to check out. So this is how 1,000 Filipino troops fought alongside Allied forces against 40,000 Chinese soldiers. So I think it took maybe like five or six months before the Chinese actually got involved in the war. I could be wrong on that. But I know when they did get involved, it got very, very hectic just because of the sheer numbers of the Chinese forces. So I want to check this out. Again, I didn't even know that the Philippines helped us in the Korean War. Makes a lot of sense. But this is just not stuff that's really taught too much in like history class and what have you. So I figured we could learn a little bit today and also just see how much work the Filipino troops were putting in during the Korean War. So let's check it out. In honor of those who sacrificed their lives for freedom, Masid proudly presents The Battle of Yultong, a story of how Filipino troops braved a sea Yultong. of Chinese soldiers during the Korean War. Hmm. The Korean War began on June 25, 1950, when North Korea, backed by China and the Soviet Union, crossed the border into South Korea in an attempt to capture its capital, Seoul. Hmm. In response, the United Nations Security Council, through the formation of the United Nations Command, ordered the deployment of... Mi oh, at UN headquarters are in New York? Is that still a thing? Why haven't I known that? Or why didn't I know that? That's kind of... Okay, that's kind of interesting. Okay, so I do know that the UN... It was a big UN force that was actually fighting back against the North Koreans. But I didn't know how many countries were actually involved. We kind of see a few of them here. So hopefully we can get a little more exposure to some of the other countries that were involved as well. Military forces to stop the invasion. On August 7, 1950, President Elpidio Quirino, with approval from Congress, sent 7,420 Filipino Damn. combat troops to fight in South Korea. Okay. President Quirino saw this as a commitment to help a friend and as part of a larger <laughs> battle to save the world from communism. The 10th oh, Battalion yeah. Combat Team, the Philippine Expeditionary Forces to Korea, was the first battalion to arrive on Pusan Shores on September 19, Pusan. 1950. Hey, nice. The 10th Battalion, made up of 1,303 enlisted men and 64 officers was originally a motorized battalion sent okay. to operate tanks from the U.S. But when none arrived, was turned into a heavy <sighs> weaponry unit instead. On the night okay. of April 22, Awkward. the 10th Battalion, as part of the U.S. 65th Infantry Regiment of the U.S. 3rd Infantry Division, was attacked north of Yeonchon by a large mm. force of Chinese and North Korean soldiers. This would be known in history as the Great Spring Offensive, one of the largest offensives by the 44th Division of the Chinese People's Volunteer Army. And the com Okay, so again, it is super weird, especially for me, having spent a year in Korea, I got pretty familiar with the layout of, you know, the major cities and what have you, and just like the, the shape of it and where old like military bases are so you know busan there's a military presence there you have a small military presence in seoul of course pyeongchak there's a big military presence and then the dmz but actually seeing all these cities like that were actually affected which were you know pretty much all of them during the korean war but actually seeing them and where they were located and who was actually involved in defending wait what the heck is this puerto rico what are they doing they have like some separate military unit doing stuff here Okay, I did not know that. But again, seeing the actual cities and having been through a lot of these cities when I was actually in Korea, it's kind of crazy to see who is actually involved in defending these cities and what major battles took part in these cities or around these cities. Communist North Korean Army during the Korean War. In front of the Filipinos were four Chinese divisions numbering about 40,000 men. Just after Golly. midnight, the Chinese began their attack with a heavy artillery barrage. Soon after, the Chinese forces advanced, but had difficulty as the 10th Battalion successfully defended their positions mm. with mortar and artillery. Okay. However, nice. a massive Chinese assault pushed the Turkish Brigade from their position, allowing the Chinese to surround the Filipinos' eastern side. Oh, that's scary. Seeing the incoming danger, Lieutenant Colonel Junisho Ojeda immediately organized a unit of battalion cooks and clerks <laughs> oh, to defend the east yeah. flank. With the help of M24 light tanks and artillery support, 
Lieutenant Colonel Ojeda's makeshift unit was able to hold off the advancing Chinese what forces. What a badass. The Good situation stuff. only got worse when the Puerto Rican 65th Infantry Regiment, situated on the west flank, began to fall back from Chinese... Oh, come on, Puerto Ricans. You guys got exposed, some more spirit than the that. The Chinese began advancing, <laughs> but were blocked by a platoon of Filipino soldiers situated on a hill overlooking Damn. Luton. Commanded by Lieutenant... This is actually, like, pretty freaking crazy. When you actually see all the, like, units that are on the their flanks, like, caving in and trying to push back, it's pretty scary. Again, that envelopment can happen super quickly. So the fact that they're able to actually maintain their line and also maintain their flanks when their flanks get pushed in, that's some pretty good stuff. So I don't know who those officers were, but they definitely had a good head on their shoulders. Jose Arciaga, this platoon refused to yield and held their ground. This gave Lieutenant <laughs> Arshaga's company commander, Captain Conrado Yap, enough time to mount a counterattack. I like the pictures they The counterattack successfully extracted the trapped platoon from the hill no and kidding. also stopped the Chinese from further advancing. Damn. But sadly, good stuff. Lieutenant Arshaga and Captain Yap were killed during the fight. Damn. In the early morning of April 23, Lieutenant Colonel Ojeda led the second counterattack using M24 tanks. Another counterattack. The off guard and pushed them away from the hill they were trying to seize. Holy the cow. Filipinos fought until midday before it was ordered to withdraw and link up with the rest of the division in the south. Hmm. 15 Filipino soldiers died, 26 were wounded, and 14 were missing in action while the Chinese and North Koreans lost around 500 soldiers. Damn! The 10th Battalion's effort Holy at Kyutong allowed the U.S. 3rd Infantry Division to successfully withdraw from the battlefield, which would later on prove to turn the war in favor of the Allies. Hmm. Two weeks later, the communists began ceasefire negotiations after suffering more heavy losses. For the next two <laughs> years, the Korean War was mostly battled from hilltops until a ceasefire was finally declared. Out of the 7,420 Filipino soldiers sent, 113 were killed, 313 wounded, 15 missing, and 41 held as prisoners of war. Damn, so that's Today, a lot. A monument stands inside the war memorial. Losing anyone is, is really crappy, but the fact that, you know, a lot of Americans aren't even aware that the Philippines sent over 7,000 troops there. I mean, all these people that were, you know, wounded or killed or taken prisoner or missing in action, you wouldn't be aware of all that until you actually read up on it or see videos like this. So, I mean, even if you hear like, okay, yeah, they sent 7,000 troops, it doesn't give you a good appreciation for what they actually did. And actually hearing these stories is, Really, really cool. And again, I like the animations because it allows you to picture everything a lot better. But yeah, like they're saying, there's it was just a ceasefire. Like the Korean War is technically still going on. It's not obviously like active combat or what have you. But I mean, it could really kick off at any point. It's such a weird thing actually being in Korea because it's so like, it doesn't seem very volatile because there's usually not a whole lot going on. But all it really takes is for someone to do the wrong thing to cause like an international incident there where stuff might start kicking off. And we haven't really seen that too much lately. But yeah, it's still crazy how it's just in a ceasefire. But yeah, man, the Philippines, I gotta say, you guys were, you guys are putting in some freaking work, just judging by this, this animation here. Memorial of Korea, in honor of the many Filipino soldiers who fought for the liberation of Korea. Recently, mm. during the 69th anniversary of the Korean War, the late Captain Conrado Yap was awarded the Taiguk Medal, the highest military decoration given to a soldier for bravery in combat. Taiguk. Also awarded okay. the Taiguk Medal was fellow 10th Battalion team member Major Maximo Young for his heroism at the Battle of New Dong. Hell yeah. The efforts of the 10th Battalion in the Battle of Yultong was instrumental in turning the tide of the war in favor of the Allied forces. Good stuff. South Korea remains a free democracy thanks to the contribution of soldiers like the Fighting Filipinos, <laughs> a name given by the U.S. command to the brave men of the 10th nice. Battalion Combat Team. That's a good nickname. Did you like our story? Are there I other did. heroic yeah, yeah. adventures of Filipinos you want us to feature? Let us know in the comment box. Don't in addition to that, if you guys know any stories or any additional battles that were fought by the Philippines in the Korean War, definitely recommend those down below. But this was fantastic to see. Again, I kind of have like a, a just a more personal relationship to the Korean War in that I was actually in Korea. But I think it's more personal to me because you don't hear a whole lot about people who have actually served 
in the Korean War. And there's not many Korean War veterans left, unfortunately. So trying to hear those stories directly from them is getting harder and harder. So it's kind of unfortunate that a lot of people don't know a whole lot about the Korean War, me included. So that's why I'm trying to learn a little bit more about it now. And again, it's just awesome to get some exposure seeing how many other countries and units were actually involved with this. But I'm gonna have to try and see if there's a video specifically on that Puerto Rican infantry unit or what have you, because that'd be kind of interesting to hear about. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys learned something. Again, if you have anything else to recommend, especially pertaining to the Korean War, like any other battles or any other, you know, stuff that, that involved other countries, not just the United States, then I would love to hear those so I can react to them and just, again, sort of spread some of the, the information around so y'all can get it too. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. That is it for this one. I'll see you on the next one.